What is up everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great, and I hope you're all staying safe. Today we have a super exciting update for the Oculus Quest 2. I don't know whether it's the most exciting update, because realistically the most exciting update is when they'll introduce Wireless Link, if that is ever going to happen. So without further ado, let's get right into the update. Yesterday, at night, when I was supposed to be asleep, whether I was is very debatable, Oculus released their version 25 update. Where version 24 went, I don't know, I'm still on version 23. However, this update is very interesting and very exciting. We finally have unofficial, well, unapproved apps in the Oculus Store through a feature called App Lab, but more on that in a second, and we've got Facebook Messenger and a bunch of other release notes that I'm going to get into in just a second. I bet a lot of you are most interested in the App Lab, so that's exactly what we're going to jump right into. App Lab, the way of sharing unofficial apps through the Oculus Store, and a lot of people are like, we have side quests for that. Like, what's the point of this? What What is the point? Anyone with like a potato PC, even a Raspberry Pi, could sideload apps to their Oculus Quest. Well, the thing is not everyone has a potato PC or a Raspberry Pi, which is by the way, more powerful than a potato PC, but everybody has a phone. And no lying to me, I know you do. You needed it to set up your quest. And if you don't have a phone, you have like an iPad or something, you use something to set it up. So therefore you will be able to use App Lab. App Lab is basically SideQuest, but it's SideQuest official Oculus version. Are they trying to steal SideQuest's place here? I don't know, to be completely honest with you. To me, SideQuest still very much exists, and I will still very much be using it. It is still the easiest way of sideloading any apps to your Oculus Quest. However, now developers can upload their apps to App Lab, and you can download them through your phone, or through your PC. All you do is you just click on it, it warns you that it's an App Lab app and that it has not gone through the verification features other apps have gone through on the Oculus Quest, and boom, you're in, you have the app. It's that simple. And this means you can officially install apps on the go when you don't have a laptop, a PC, or a potato at hand, you can now install them. Which means if I'm at the airport and all of a sudden I'm like, <gasps> new app. I can install it uh, as long as the airport Wi-Fi is not two megabits per second, which is great. I personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. You know, the more options we give developers to send their apps to us, the better. And the cool part is there's already apps on App Lab and you've seen the app videos going over me while I'm speaking. This is one of them. This is Ancient Dungeon Beta. When I saw it last night, it instantly gave me Minecraft vibes. It looks really damn cool, and I'm personally really excited to try this out. Again, I haven't tried it out yet because I was um, asleep. So, here are a few apps that are currently on App Lab, and I'm gonna be reading this from Upload VR. Now, some apps on App Lab are free, and some App Labs are paid. Yes, App Labs. Let's call them that. Yeah, from now on, apps on App Labs are called App Labs. And the first one, like I was saying, is Ancient Dungeon Beta. This is the one that I'm personally going to be trying out. It looks really damn good. Baby Hands, which is $20. Crisis VR Brigade, which is $6. Crisis VR Brigade 2, which is $20. Dazem, $8. Descent Alps, a demo, which is free. And a few more. Also, this article is going to be down below for you guys to check out. Pavlov Shack is also going to be coming to App Lab, which is pretty damn exciting for everybody that really likes Pavlov Shack. Currently, you had to sideload it. Now, it seems that it is going to be coming to App Lab, which makes sense. But the current official quest launch is still unknown. However, this is very exciting. And it's nice to see Oculus giving developers that option. Again, I hope SideQuest isn't affected by this, but I'm sure it has some form of implications. But hey, App Lab. We now have more apps available to people on the Oculus Quest. Ooh, actually, does this mean we'll be able to get the virtual desktop patch through App Lab? That would be amazing. That would be great. No more needing a PC at all to play Shadow. I think we're onto something here. And now the second part. Facebook Messenger is now on the Oculus Quest. So they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we're bringing apps together and we're bringing people together. The thing is, I've been trying to move away from Facebook Messenger. This really makes me want to go back to it. I don't know what it is about that mindset of getting a message to show up in VR. It's just really cool, but I really don't want to, but then I really want to. Like I've worked so hard to move away from it. Let me know what you guys think about that down below. Are you guys using Facebook Messenger? Okay, so the version 25 update came with these two main features, Facebook Messenger and App Lab. However, with every update, there is multiple features that are just kind of hidden behind the curtains. They're just kind of gestured behind the curtains, you know? We're gonna go through them. First of all, 
Stationary Boundaries 2.0. Stationary Guardian 2.0. Yeah, that's it. They've improved the Guardian system so that now you can see the Guardian system by just moving your head and not moving your controllers. I didn't actually notice this was an issue to begin with, but it's in the release notes, so it must have been. Not only that, but they've just improved it in general. And you know, this is gonna sound super wrong coming from someone that has completely disabled the Guardian altogether using developer settings, but the more security you have to know where you are in virtual space so that you don't break a TV or a monitor is good. Now again, this is coming from someone that has completely disabled it, so take that as you will. I'm not recommending disabling it, by the way. The pass-through shortcut has now been moved from experimental features to the general tab, which is really good because that thing has actually been working really damn well recently. Like, when my mom was playing Beat Saber, I could literally walk up to her when I wanted to say something to her and just tap the headset twice, just knock on it, be like, hello, how, how, what's up? And uh, it would work. So that's really cool. They've finally kind of made it good enough to be out of those experimental features, which is always good for a feature. VR profiles. And I'm going to read this directly from their release notes because I'm going to get confused. We've updated the look, feel, and functionality of in-VR profiles and info. Some of the specific changes you will see will include having profile cards show up directly from your menu bar so that you can look up your friend or check out the new avatar without leaving the current avatar or experience. Good. We've made it so that people who use Facebook to log into Oculus can display Facebook friends and more easily communicate. Keep in mind you can change or update your privacy settings at any time. Well look, at least they remind you of that. Universal Menu. You can now access Universal Menu across any apps, games, or experiences you are currently in. To enable this feature, put on your headset and select Settings, Experimental Features, Universal Menu Overlay. So now any app you're in, you can access that Universal Menu. Also pretty good. The more access we have to the Universal Menu, which is supposed to be universal, the better. We've also made updates and improvements to the design and function of the Universal Menu. These include a sleeker toolbar design with easier to select menu items. When you're in a party, you can now view party details and leave the party directly from the Universal Menu. Improve tablet behavior when launching apps, switching panels, or resuming headset use. Good, because the he resuming headset use didn't always work. Sometimes the Guardian would disappear, things would happen, problems would occur. And there's a few more things here that I'm going to skip through. However, the release notes are down in the description below if you guys want to check out the full thing. But the one I personally am pretty excited for is Bluetooth mouse. You can now use a Bluetooth mouse while you're in VR. To do this, ensure your Bluetooth mouse is in pairing mode, go into settings, experimental features, Bluetooth pairing. And a lot of you might be like, hey, why you wanna use this? Well, I was already able to use a keyboard in VR in Oculus browser, say. Now, I can also use my mouse. So this is pretty exciting, especially for people that like to do productivity in VR. But these are some really exciting news. Let me know what you guys think down below. And uh, yeah, overall, we're getting a lot of improvements, a lot of quality of life improvements, a lot of just things in general that are going to make our experience better. It's nice to know that we are getting these updates. And of course, App Lab will also work with the Oculus Quest 1. For any of the Oculus Quest 1 users, you are not being left out in the dust, which is really nice. However, what is still weird is that Oculus has continued deciding to roll out their updates gradually, which is really weird to me because they say it's for seamless updates. However, I think for seamless updates to work, you'd want everyone to have it at the same time, to have a seamless experience. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you don't have the update yet don't worry you're gonna get it we just don't know when like for example I don't have it yet so now without any further ado let's hop right onto reddit now today is the first day that I have never looked at the reddit like I don't know what's going to be on here like I didn't even check out the reddit tab on the discord so I have no clue what I'm venturing into so this is apparently the most upvoted one this is an issue I'm not no we're skipping this this one's just hmm iron iron you mean iron like minecraft iron you want me to give you iron what is what are you got what, what, what is this me and the boys checking out how the floor is this is good this is good this is some quality stuff right here i was checking out the floor yesterday actually it was really good quality quality floor just saying we have a quality floor down there and you know what guys this is where we're leaving today's reddit you guys only posted two memes that i can literally show on youtube gg you you have surpassed anything that i would have guys family friendly okay 
Um, okay, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of this community, it is an absolutely great community that we have built here and it's growing really fast. I'm really proud of what we've created. And if you guys want to join it, make sure to check out that Discord down below. Make sure to check out our Reddit where I want to see you posting your spicy memes so we have more to review for next time that aren't like that. So if you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, mysticalstore.com down below. We've got sick hoodies that don't put a huge ad on your body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. And if you guys would like to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.